Hello YouTube! My name is Nye, you're watching Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar tutorials and we are in my shop, Finale Guitar, in Sheffield. In today's video I've got a really special guest for you, it's the one and only Frank Kilkelly. He's particularly well known for his books accompanying Irish music on guitar and the second volume of the same. He's also recently released some video courses for Irish guitar players and of course over the years he's become recognised as a giant of Irish guitar. He's played with loads of great musicians, people like Brendan Power, Boys of the Loch. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about how he got into Irish music, um, some of his favourite guitars, what sorts of tunings he likes to use, some great players he's played with in the past and loads of other good stuff. Before we get into the video just do yourself a huge favour and hit the little subscribe button down there because that will get you a free Celtic guitar tutorial from me every weekend and you could also please do me a favour and hit the little like button down there um, it really helps my channel out because the YouTube algorithm will show my videos to more people if you do that. So without further ado let's get into the interview. So firstly yeah thank you very much Frank for coming on Folk Friend today. Um, do you mind just telling us a little bit about how you got into playing Irish music and your kind of bands that you've played with over the years and things like that? Sure, sure. I, I started, I started in, I grew up in Mayo and Castlebar in the mid 70s when the folk revival was really just kicking off uh, bands like the Body Band and Planks D were, were, were all the rage. Uh, and I had some local neighbours who were playing as well and there was a local session in the in the in the pub in the local pub weekly thing so when i was about 14 or 15 i was i was sitting in the pub on a wednesday night um strumming away without really knowing to be honest i was in standard tuning i didn't know anything about anything really um and but i had a great start and i had great you know i was made very welcome and that was that was a huge part of it really because learning in isolation you know wasn't something i would have done to be honest my next door neighbor played the mandolin he's he's pretty well known these days his name is brendan o'regan and he was my next door neighbor. He played in Jadanan for a while in Bazooki, and he's a very well respected producer and recording engineer around this part. Um, but so but he was my next door neighbor from the age of 10. So, uh, and strangely, the guy across the road was a guy called Shea Kavanagh. And his first band was in, well, the, the singer in his first band was Mary Black. So this is all in the local in the local, the local neighborhood at home. It's not quite coincidence. But anyway, so yeah, from there. From there, I went. Uh, you know, I play. I played in countless sessions around the west of Ireland for for, for those years, and until uh, night. Where did I go to London in nine, uh, eighty six? In eighty six, so I was twenty six. I went to moved to London in eighty six and didn't play a note for a couple of years. And then I met a few people. I was I was I was doing different jobs, whatever, um, and uh, met a few people. Met met. Um, who uh, Luke Daniels actually would have been the first traditional musician that I met, Luke from Reading. Um, I started playing with Luke and uh, and Mick Keneally and a, ha a small handful of London-based uh, traditional players, and started to play with those. and And Luke, Luke was fond of Dadgad, so I hadn't really experimented much, much with Dadgad until then. And to be honest, I still haven't. <laughs> but um, kind of got my got my little repertoire of shapes together, and 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 uh, that was what he preferred. Um, and went from, went from there. Pardon? So you don't need a big repertoire of shapes for that gathering. You really don't. You really don't. You really don't. You, you, you know the, the the capo the capo makes it all work. Um, yeah. Um, so so yeah. From Luke to 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 there to to um, who else? And then from that, I suppose I I was I, was, I played with in a bunch of session situations. And then the professional things I did in London were not really traditional based. I played in a bunch of different string bands. A band called Zumzo, and a band called Companions of the Rosy Hours. And then I had a band with Chris Haig, a band called Spice Trade, a kind of a bluegrass and acoustic music, improvised acoustic music uh, quartet with, with Chris called Spice Trade. And um, what else did I do? Uh, I started, yeah, in fact, Chris Newman, I met Chris Newman then through Luke, actually, when Luke was recording his album, Simon Mayer in Reading recorded Luke's album and, and Chris and, and Simon were good, are, are good friends. So uh, Chris, Chris very kindly recommended me to a handful of people I ended up uh, I, Chris, Chris hooked me up with the boys of the lock and with Maggie Boyle, who's passed away. Uh, so I did an album with Maggie and a lot of, lot of gigs with Maggie Boyle. And there was somebody else as well. Now, who did he? Oh, Christy O'Leary from the boys of the lock. I did, I did some work with Christy O'Leary as well. Um, and so those connections, so Chris, I'm very grateful to Chris, eternally grateful to Chris for those connections at that time. That was, that was really helpful. And then I started working back here. I was still, I was still in London. I was working with uh, Sean Kane, Dolores's, Dolores's brother, Sean Kane, uh, singer. And uh, so I worked with Sean for a number of years. I toured, toured around the, around the world with him, and uh, also at the same time I played with Alan Kelly, 
Oh, and I met, uh, when I was in London, in my London years, I met uh, Brendan Power, the harmonica player. Oh, and yeah. he, he was kind of, so I, I played with Brendan. We did an album together back back in the mid-90s. And I did a lot of, lot of playing with Brendan as well. Um, so yeah, that's that was kind of the the, the that was that was my diary back in those years, back in the London years. Um, I came back here and it kind of changed a little bit. I got more, I got more into gypsy jazz and more into different styles. Um, still playing traditional music, still playing with Alan Kelly uh, now and then, and uh, and local traditional stuff. So yeah, that's 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 me in a nutshell. <laughs> One thing I find interesting about it is how, how much scope do you think there is for um, combining, particularly gypsy jazz, I think combines well with Irish music. And you see people like um, in the sort of Shetland style, like uh, Peary Willie Johnson and then, you know, Titch Richardson and all those kinds of people that are sort of similar kind of style. And that's yeah. very gypsy jazz influenced. How it, much is, it, it, it is. And yeah. Sorry, say that again. How much um, do you like that kind of fusion stuff is that um i i think you have to be really careful with it i think i think it works and and if you listen to willie like and when you say gypsy jazz willie willie played and, and it's, it's not an important distinction but it, but it's swing it's a swing style that that became gypsy jazz and willie 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 wouldn't have even known what gypsy jazz was willie was listening listening to uh you know big bands and and you know um what's his name uh uh Forgotten the name escapes me. The, the, the seminal rhythm player in the big bands, Count Basie's big band. Anyway, anyway, these these guys, just just you know, four in the bar, downbeats, um, you know, with with a heavy bass line going on through, and not much else really. It's it's a glorified snare drum, really. You know, it's it's that's that's what it is. But um, so I think I think in any in any in any um, uh genre mixing i think you really have to be conversant with both genres that's that's my take on it and then then you can do it with some sensitivity but if you know more about one and a little about the other in my to my ears it doesn't always work so well mm. yeah because it's interesting to me because this is the thing i've got i've got a copy of your your book here by the way which, um <laughs> highly recommend by the way if anybody wants to get a copy it's linked in the box down below um <laughs> accompanying irish music on guitar and I noticed one thing you said in the intro, which I never knew about, was that um, guitars were actually banned um, by the sort of regulating body of Irish trad music for quite a period of time, because they're they were. a recent addition to the, the trad canon, aren't they? And people don't realise this, I think, a lot now. Well, they're relatively recent. Uh, I mean, they go back to the, the accompaniment, accompaniment on guitar or piano started when, when the recording started to be made commercially in, the, in America. In the in the twenties, that's when the record companies thought accompaniment is a good idea here. And, and you know, Michael Coleman playing fantastically on his own is only is only going to go so far in terms of record sales. So they started adding guys and guys who didn't really know anything about it. You know, swing like again swing players and and you know session players who were hired to somehow listen to the tune and and, and some some was good and some was not so good. But that was the start of accompaniment and 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 it and then. It got mixed up with with in Ireland in the sixties and seventies with the ballad singers, uh, who were prime, first and foremost singers, and and they sang ballads and didn't really didn't really weren't really tuned into, you know, the the, the harmonic nuances of, of 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 the traditional tunes. So and the, and the, also it was before you know alternative tunings were introduced into the style. So it was pretty crude in ways, and and I kind of get why the, why why it called this bandit, but at the same time. It was a completely outrageous thing to do, you know, because it it it, it what happened then was that the music developed uh, parallel with Coltis rather than under its umbrella, which was the whole the whole purpose was of Coltis was to help the music develop. So it was it was it was counterproductive in that way, um, and and you know in other ways they were they were they were counterproductive. They had archaic ideas about how things should be done and so on. But yeah, I was I was taken off a stage in one in one in one session because I had the guitar. We were in this Coltis organized thing. And the local guys, because I was playing with these, these were my friends and I was playing with them all the time. And we were doing the summer thing that had the Coltis umbrella. And at the at the at the uh, the autumnal meeting of all the groups around the country who were doing this particular gig, uh, I appeared with my guitar and I was I was beckoned off the stage and I was told, no, sorry, there's no, no guitars in this. <laughs> so so everybody left it, every, everybody else left the stage as well. Uh, and the following band got wind of it and they left and there was uproar and so on. <laughs> that was back in the 70s. So, yeah. That's, that's such a strange attitude because, like, if you really were sticking to what's traditional, you'd only have really whistles and 
flutes. Absolutely, and I've had this. I've had this discussion with with a bunch of with, with a handful of of of, uh, of, of, of cultists, you know, strong um, stalwarts, and and you know, um, yeah, there is no argument. There is no argument. <laughs> yeah. well, at the same time, I, I understand. I understand how the guitar got a bad name in the music. You know, it got a bad name from being from 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 how it got there, if you like. Um, but you know, um, it, it needed to be given a chance, obviously, um, for, for it to develop and so on and so forth. And they weren't prepared to do that. So yeah, um, that's yeah. Um, talking about alternate tunings, you, you hmm. said you don't use DadCAD very much. Um, do you have any sort of advice for people that are starting out and looking at which tunings to go with? Um, what's your opinion? I, I do, I do. I, I, you know, I was I was dabbling in in different tunings before I realised the association between them all. And just just to explain, it's in the book, but just just because it was a real light bulb moment moment for me, I'd like to mention it now. So you got standard tuning, and then one step away from that is to drop the sixth down to D. So you've got drop D and then you drop the first string down to D also. And then you've got double drop D and then you drop the second string down to Tony and you've got dadgad. Now I never made the connection between standard and dadgad like that before. To me, dadgad was just this other tuning and I had to completely find my whole way around it again. Uh, that's just how my brain works or doesn't work. So um, that's that's the first thing about it. I, I, I find, um, but either either drop D or double drop D are are the two tunings that that make it easy, the two tunings that give you everything you need. And I really like double drop D because it's 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 got the modal sound of dadgad, but you can still relate to standard tuning in the middle four strings. So if you're if you've played some guitar or lots of guitar and you don't want to you don't want to try and have to rethink in dadgad, for example, but you want that you like that open sound, double drop D is great. That's that's really how I would how I would um, put it. That's an interesting. Well, I've I, I do know I've never actually used double drop D. I kind of made I jumped from standard to dadgad, and I, okay. I like both. Uh, I think dadgad is harder to, especially when you're thinking in terms of more complicated chords like you know jazzy things. Then it's very complicated in dadgad, but it's. Um, but if I you're agree. if you're playing in double drop D, then do you do you use that for keys that? conveniently contain a D like D and G and not so yeah. much like A minor and or you... it, it, no it's you see no and you can you can you can you can use it in the same way that you use drop D. You can really for the most part just ignore the first string. Mm. It's going to be it's going to be a fourth in, in place if that's okay. Uh, yeah. or you can or you can or you can not emphasize it with your plectrum. You know you can you can steer away from it and, and not play it much. So you can you can steer your right hand style to to making it sound okay. Um uh, but you still have you, 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 I, I'm still thinking in terms of standard tuning or standard tuning with a drop D, you know. Yeah. So, so it's 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 um it's got it's got it's got the best of both worlds for me in that way, and I, and it is versatile. Yeah, the capo is still essential, uh, I think. But I mean, get me wrong. There are people who who do a great job without a capo in all tunings. But mm. you know, life is hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always been concerned about when you see people that have to be using the the capo all the time because he, he, there's a sort of temptation to end up playing something very similar under a lot of things that way well yeah but you know that's okay that's okay it's not about the accompanist you know that that's my take on 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 on, on a compliment and uh, my take on a compliment is is to embellish and, and like I, I like to think of it as a kind of a carpet of sound underneath the melody player and it doesn't matter if you what you what you're going to do is going to be the same only if the tune is the same. So you're going to be guided by the harmony of the tune. So otherwise, it's perfectly okay to do the same thing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you change tune. And you don't, you know, I mean, and get, don't get me wrong, there are people who do that wonderfully. And Ian Carr comes to mind straight away as, as somebody who's reinvented the whole approach to, you know, accompanying a set of tunes. And he's fantastic and I love him to this. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, like m most traditional players, um, I won't say don't want, that sort of creativity but it doesn't need it it doesn't need it and the tunes don't need to be supported in that way it, it, if you want to make something else out of it then great but to embellish the tune and give it give it a support you know without without changing its color is absolutely fine to do that's you know uh, I, I tend to think of it as you know if you're a drummer you don't want to stand out it, it, or, or a bass player for that matter you want to be you want to be high you want to be vis visible or audible but you don't want to be you know you're not the center of attention and that's my take on 
you know, is like, stay out of the way. That's my, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. So I think people, I know a lot of people um, that you see kind of progressing sort of want to throw in everything at once, don't they? And yeah. Then getting yeah. DNA in the right places is the most important bit, I suppose. And then. Totally, totally, yeah. totally. And it, it's about, for me, it's about rhythm and tone. You know, if you're playing, if you're playing a rhythm that, that, uh, that that the that the melody players are inspired by and lifted by, uh, and a tone that that is sweet and that you know is that is that that's nice to listen to. You're halfway there. It's mm. not about it's not about you know fireworks. It really isn't. That's yeah. you know, um, and and if you look at the people who you know and and, and it always for me it comes back to you know I want the gig. I want to be hired. I want to be playing. I want to be out there. So. If, if, you, if you look at the people who are out there playing, what are they doing? What, what, why are they do, you know, why are they being hired? The, you know, for the majority of them, and, and again, it depends on who they're playing with and it depends on the melody players, but, but you know, the, the ones I look up to are the ones who are just playing a beautiful rhythm and they've got lovely tone and they're just, everything is in its place, you know? Mm. Rather than, you know, I mean, as, you know, of course there are exceptions. There are always exceptions and there are the groundbreaking guys and girls who are doing it, you know, but uh, they're not, they're the exceptions rather than the rule. You know? Yeah, yeah. I suppose a big a big part of what makes uh, trap music kind of magical in its way is that it's it isn't it isn't fireworks. It's not complicated. It's something that's passed down through thousands of years, relatively unchanged. Well, I mean, certainly since the sixteen hundreds, I know it's been four hundred yeah. years, but, <laughs> but it's probably been relatively unchanged and. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not, you know, folk music w was never really about innovation. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was about, you know, it was about uh, social things really. And it was about communicating and it was about, you know, it was about uh, uh, small C conservative or traditional, you know, it was about, about those kind of values rather than groundbreaking new, you know, um, territory, you know, musically or otherwise. It, 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 it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be innovative. Fine, fine if you want to. If you want to find a new voice, then it's great. Um, but you know, um, be careful. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> and, and and the thing about it is, like the envelope gets pushed, you know, by by the innovators, and that's great. That needs to happen. But then then the then the, then the, the boundaries spring back a bit into what sticks. You know, it doesn't all stick. Some of it, some of it does. You know, and then you get the imitators of the innovators, and then it starts to sound cheap, uh, and then and then you get you know, and then and then and then whatever is good and stood, the imitation of the innovation, and uh, you know will 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 remain. You know, so it gets like the envelope gets pushed and it gets tested by that process, and then and then by that the body of of you know stuff in there grows. Mm, yeah. I see you've got you've got a big old rack of guitars behind you there. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your your instrument preferences? And sure, sure. I've seen your uh, fiber machine in a few of your videos where you're playing songs. Right, right. I just got that. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's an extraordinary guitar. I have. Let me tell you first. I have a Loudon. Oh, yeah. an unusual Loudon dreadnought. Yeah. That that, that I love. <laughs> It could use strings. And and it's it, it's been my guitar. I bought I, I bought it nearly 20 years ago now, and it's been my absolute favorite guitar for, for years and years and years. And I came across the the um the carbon fiber guitar uh actually backstage at a Jules Holland gig in Sligo last year or the year before. And I met the guy, I met the maker. He, it's, it's made in, made in uh, Donegal. Carbon fibre made in Donegal by, by a guy called... Emer Emerald is the brand. Yeah. I don't know how it translates into your microphone now, but... It's oh, an absolute man. beautiful, warm sound. And... And it's coming from here, so so for half deaf people like me, this is great. Yeah. Right. Our, yeah. It's, it's, it's right. So you're you're hearing a lot more of the instrument here, but it's an absolutely exquisite sound. When I played it first, I I thought it sounded like a recording of a guitar with a beautiful reverb at it. 
that's that's it's it's that sweet. It really is. So yeah, to be honest, and it's and it's indestructible, which is great. It's it's a it's a big body as you can see, but because of the carbon fiber, they're able to they're able to um, make these contours here and here. So it doesn't feel like a big guitar, and and the the, the bottom this this bout here is is angled, so that when it sits on your lap, it doesn't feel like a big guitar. Amazing. Really. Really clever, yeah, and 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 there's no neck block here because it's all it's all one piece. So it's you know, so you, you can go right up here if you want. Uh, yeah. So uh, and and it plugs in really well. It's a lovely sound. I'm 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 really happy with it. Ah. And that's Emerald, Emerald guitars. Right. I'll yeah. put I'll I'll find their website and I'll stick a little link in the box mm. down below because yeah. uh, sure people would be interested to see that. Yeah, yeah, it sounds amazing in your in your. When when you're singing with it, it sounds lovely because it's so so much room at the bottom end. And there uh, is, yeah, there is. It's, 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 it's absolutely beautiful. Other than that, I have I have a nylon string guitar, which is a, a '70s Suzuki. I, it's not in tune. Maybe it's not too far away. Bought it in Portobello Market for I think either thirty quid or forty quid, and I put strings on it and, and new pegs, and it's been just like this ever since, and it's just lovely. It's oh. lovely. And people, I have guitarists come to my house and they go through and they pick this one up and they go, oh, this is really nice, <laughs> and I don't tell them how much I paid for it. <laughs> so yeah, otherwise, otherwise, in the, in the, that's it really. In, in the in the in the straight acoustics, I have a I have a nice gypsy jazz one one from them. Um, uh, the John Jorgensen Jitan model. I just got to pick that up last, uh, a couple of years ago in Seattle. And I have um, Eastman that I play a lot of just kind of straight ahead jazz on. Oh, lovely. Eastman 810, that's really nice. That's an uh, eight, yeah, 805. Oh, oh, so, yeah, cool. really nice too. So that's it. And the guitar stakes. Amazing. Yeah, that's a good little collection. Is do you know what? I thought you'd say uh, behind this curtain, I've got another fifty. You know, that's tends to <laughs> well. Well, no, there's something else completely different behind that curtain, actually. Um, I'll, I'll show you. All right. Oh, it's a squeeze box collection, is it? No. Oh, almost. They're lamps. Oh, cool. A guy called, this is the piano accordion version. I don't have, I don't think I have a button accordion version here. Let me see. Oh, I haven't. The, the, I, don't have a, I don't have a bellows on it at the moment. There's the button accordion one. Oh, um, yeah. A guy called Tommy Peoples made these uh, back, in the, back in the 90s. And uh, back in the nineties, yeah, and and before he, before he, a couple of years before he died, I, I I came across them and called him and asked him if he'd be okay with me making them, and he said, "Ah, go ahead, I'm done making them," you know. So I never got around to it until the lockdown this time last year. Yeah. And uh, I just I just started making them, and, and so I, I have a website, and they're up on sale, and so on and so forth. That's those two, and this concertina. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, they're <brilliant>. so, yeah. <laughs> What's, so, what's the site for those? Pardon me? What's the uh, website for those? The website for these is wildatlantictreasures.ie. Right. I'll put a link yeah. down below as well. Do, please. Yeah. Do, please. Yeah. Is that Tommy Peoples as in Tommy Peoples, the fiddle player? Yeah. Yes. Yes, wow. the, same, the same man, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Very talented man. A lovely painter as well. Yeah, a great artist. Really fine. Oh, yeah, he was an exceptionally talented man. Huh. Oh, oh yeah! Really, what a great idea! They're really nice. I like them. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're right there. They really, they really, uh, I re they really grabbed me when I saw them first. So yeah, yeah, that's my that was my lockdown project for last year. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, the last little thing I was going to ask you about is, hmm. um, do you mind just telling us a little bit about what you're, who you're playing with now? You know what you're working on and anything more about your you know your various social media and websites and books and so on sure, anything like that sure. this is this is yeah. <laughs> advertisement time okay well in a note in a nutshell the first book 
has has a, has a, a whole you know has everything I know I knew I knew about Irish music at the time, um, and I have to say absolutely essential to buy the CD with it. It was available without the CD, and it's it was never designed to be available without the CD. So um, get get the CD with it. Um, the second, and so I put everything I knew into you know the whole background information and all that is on volume one. Volume two came about. Uh, as as a, as a, a, a byproduct of an album I did with a really fine whistle player called Angela Dean, um, and that was in 2005, I think. I think sometime after that, uh, I, I charted out the, the the guitar parts. Well, I felt it was it, it had kind of moved on a bit, and I focused my my style a bit more. And the book that book is a general cross, you know, that that was a study thing, whereas the book was the was the product of an album. So the styles are a bit more uh, innovative or a bit more a bit more progressive, I suppose. Some of them are anyway. Um, so yeah, so that that's that's the two books. Other than that, um, I, I you know I I, I like to teach I, I like to think of it as as uh, uh, my teaching approach is 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 is, is uh, uh, that that you learn by doing. Uh, I think you can learn a lot more by just copying. Uh, and it was an, it was advice that I got to the opposite to the to, uh, to the opposite advice as a teenager i had a i had a, a mentor a guy, a guy that was a few years older than me who said oh no 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 you shouldn't copy anybody else that's a really no no you, you really need to find your own thing and blah 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 and many years later i thought that was really bad advice you know and, and the advice i would give to somebody is to absolutely copy everybody but know that you're copying them and don't think that you're creating the stuff that you're just copying if you're learning them, if you're learning all this stuff to take the, the tricks and the tools on board, that's that's the job. Then you got this stuff on board. Now you go and now now start getting creative. Now that you've got your tool bag together, that's how I see it. That's that's a little pet thing of mine where, where you know where, 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 because because I'm forever I, I regularly think about that 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 poor advice that I kind of in a way wish I hadn't had. You know, we, like you know, had I had I been copying everybody back then. I would have been, probably would have developed a bit quicker. Anyway, it's a really important point, isn't it? Because you could you see some people that just want to sound like one player, and I think that's dangerous. But yeah. at the same time, you're only going to develop your own style by borrowing bits that you like from other places. You know, music music's been made for however many millions of years now. It's not like you're going to invent anything new at this point. So uh... no, no. I mean, there are still there are still innovators, but but the, the, and and that depends on who you are as a musician. I mean, there you know there, there are you know there, there are people who don't need this advice. You know, there are the Jacob Colliers of this world and whoever, you know, musical geniuses who like, you know, who, who are on a, on, a, on a trajectory. And that's great. But, uh, you know, for, for, for people of average talent or average ability, you know, I, th I think the quickest way to becoming proficient is to get as many tricks, wherever they come from. If they appeal to you, learn them, take them on board. But know that you're not creating. Don't, don't fool yourself into thinking that you're making music when you're just copying somebody else. That's, that's the point I'm making, really. And then, and then once, you, once you're clear on your intention, and you have these tools on board well then it's easier to easier to um you know start being yourself musically that's you know um where where was i with that oh yeah I won't, yes but with, with, i know where i was with that with that in mind i i, I put it together a bunch of mini lessons uh, that i have on uh, they're, they're hosted on youtube but i have them linked on my patreon page as well and they're just mini mini lessons one tune accompanied once Here's what's happening. Here's some chords. Here's a right hand pattern. Uh, have a go, and you can just play through these uh, in a different tuning and a different style, different flavor with a different melody player. Uh, and the idea is that you play along. I mean, I, anybody that I know, uh, you know, any professional players have done a huge amount of playing. That's where they got it from. They didn't really get it from studying. They got it from playing, from doing it. And and the, and the same is true in the jazz world. Um, I studied jazz for a while and I, and I found I got completely bogged down in music theory that didn't really help me to become a jazz musician, or, or not that I'm one, but it didn't really help me to get to play jazz. What, get, what gets me to play jazz is doing it. And the more you do it, and of course, listening as well. Uh, and and, and while, while the theory is a help to understand what's going on, learning the theory alone doesn't make you become that great musician. You know, you've, that comes by doing it. Because yeah, some of the skills, yeah. some of the skills are are are, are, are motor skills, they're, they're, they're you know physical motor skills, uh, and you just have to get to the point where you're making a nice noise, and that just takes doing. Mm. So mm. with that in mind, the Patreon page is there. I, I send you, I send, I send you an email with all those links if you would, if you put them, stick them up somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Great. 
And the other, the other last thing that I did, I did this as a, as a, the other lockdown projects before the, before the accordion lamps, uh, was I, I put the two books into video courses. So they're now available on, uh, on another platform on, on uh, thinkific.com. I'll send you that link as well. And they're also actually linkable through my website, which is irishtradguitar.com. The video courses are advertised there. And they're carbon copies of the books I relearned. I had to relearn how I played the stuff 20 years ago in the books in order to, to re-record it and, and present it in the video courses. So they're all there as well. So um, all I need to know now is how to, how to market all that on social media, and then I'd be really happy. <laughs> just a last thought on that one to people that have that i know a, a lot of people have taken up folk music over the last year with the lockdown um mm. and getting to the point now where they're sort of becoming proficient mm. um now that sessions are opening up again are you basically saying people should go to them and try and play along and try and play with as many people as possible is that your sort of well, well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, the world of accompaniment is 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 a funny one when it comes to joining sessions because there's a whole, as I'm sure you know, <clears throat> there's a whole load of session etiquette when it comes to, you know, the pecking order from the accompanist's point of view, whether whether you're whether you're a guitar player or a bazooki player or even a boron player, you know, like there's a whole load of things you need to not do, you know. Um, so I, I'm, without getting into all that, you really have to tread lightly. And, and the best thing you can do is, is, is play really quietly, you know, in the situation until you feel like my, 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 my um, bottom line really is I ask myself, will I add something if I sit in here? And if I don't think I will, I'm not going to do it. Because the bigger picture has to prevail. You, you've got to be adding something to the music. And if you're the, if you're the second or third or fourth guitarist sitting down in a, in a big session, you're not really going to add anything. You're doing it for yourself. And I was going to say that's okay. It's not really okay. <laughs> it's not okay because, because it's just bringing the session down a bit. It's just making it all muddy. And, you know, you, you've got to listen to the bigger picture, I think. Um, so uh, that makes it hard and it makes it hard if you're out there and if, you, if you've driven for an hour to get to the session and, and you're the third guitarist to get there, that's tough. That's, you know, I get it. Um, but that's, that's, that doesn't make the music any better if you join in. <laughs> How far you drove doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose you like to hope that guitarists kind of take turns, but it doesn't seem well, to... Absolutely, like absolutely. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, I mean, I mean, you know, the generous ones, and sometimes, sometimes it's the older ones. You know, have 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 a bit of manners, and and will will see that there's somebody else waiting, and and have the have the sense to know that look, you know, we're not going to both play together. You know, because the problem with, as you know, the problem with 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 two or more uh, um, harm, accompanying instruments playing together is that they're not likely to play in the same rhythms or the same chords, and that's just a mess. You know. Yeah. Um, there, there are times. I mean, I've sat down with other other guitar players and deliberately locked in with them, and, and you know, we've done a series of nods and whatever else, and we do the same thing, and mm -hmm. or, or maybe use a high cap of position. Somebody else is using, you know, and we, we so we work on together, and that's a different thing. Yeah, uh, you that's, get to a certain level, then you can do that. that. Skill because it's good ear training, isn't it? But um, totally, totally. But yeah, it's a different. Totally. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, thank you very much for talking to, to me today, Frank. Um, is there anything coming up that people can see you playing at or? Um... Uh, no, actually. Um, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a couple of little private gigs in the diary, but no, uh, I'm not. I, I've no I've no great plans, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I, I did a, I did a lockdown thing. Uh, when I got that new carbon fibre guitar, I was so excited about it. I did a, I did a tune a day or a song a day on Facebook back in March last year, I think. Um, and that, that's, you know, I'd, I'd love people to check that out and, and, and like it or not. <laughs> um, but it, that's, that's, that, that's, and I was very happy with most of it. Um, so, yeah, so um, check me out there and, 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 you know, check my website out. And, and that's, that's as much as I can offer at the moment in the, in the, in the, in the way of, in the way of getting out there. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll so, put links to, I'll put, I've put a link in the corner to your, um, your, tune a day series and i'll put some links to your websites and your books as well down below so hopefully okay. people can go and have a look at those and of course as well if you want to um, check out the complete folk friend collection there's hundreds of free videos click the little link in the corner 